Hi, I'm Femi OK. And I'm Malika Pilal, and you're in the stream. Today, Colombia and FARC rebels end the world's longest running civil war. Will a divided country accept an historic peace? Today, Colombians are bidding farewell to decades of flames and sending up a bright flare of hope that illuminates the entire world. Viva La Paz! A national referendum in Colombia Sunday will decide on a peace deal with the Revolutionary Armed Forces of Colombia. That's a rebel group known as the FARC. The FARC began as a peasant uprising for land reform in the 1960s, but it's since grown into a guerrilla insurgency fueled by money from kidnappings, extortion and the drug trade. The Colombian government has fought them with the help of billions of dollars in U.S. military aid. The conflict has killed more than 220,000 people and displaced millions. An accord finalized last month lets FARC members abandon their jungle bases and join Colombian society. The leaders of both sides sent a message of reconciliation at a signing ceremony in the city of Cartagena. Colombians, the horrible night has ended and a new day with all its promises has arrived. I invite you to open your arms, your eyes, your minds and your hearts and welcome the daybreak of peace. In the name of the FARC, I ask the victims of the conflict for forgiveness for all the pain that we have caused them during this war. The deal was signed with a pen made from a bullet shell. But voters decide if the war's last shots have been fired. Polls show a majority will approve the accord in Sunday's referendum. However, the yes side faces a vocal opposition led by former President Álvaro Uribe. This gives impunity and eligibility to run for office to the highest leaders of the FARC, the world's largest cocaine trafficking cartel. So will Colombia's peace still heal the, wo the wounds of more than half a century conflict? With us to talk about this, Adam Isaacson, Regional Security Policy Program Director at the Washington Office on Latin America. Mario Murillo is a professor at Hofstra University and author of the book Colombia and the United States, joining us from Hempstead, New York. Daniel Garcia Pena is a professor at Colombia's National University in Bogota, Colombia. He headed the Colombian government's peace commission back in the 1990s. He's the founder of Planet Peace, which promotes grassroots involvement in the Colombian peace process. Paloma Valencia is a senator from the Democratic Center Party. She's also joining us from Bogota. And we also have Federico Hoyos. He is a congressman from the Democratic Center Party. He's joining us from Bogota as well. Welcome, everybody. Daniel, you have read this agreement from the beginning to the end. As somebody who's experienced in trying to get the FARC to the table with the current administration or the administration in Colombia, what do you think of the agreement as, as a peace deal? Well, I think it's an excellent agreement. I think that if you look at it from a Colombian historical point of view, this is the best agreement uh, that has ever been reached because not only does it involve uh, historical questions, the issue of land reform, the issue of political participation, but it also puts at the center of the process the victims, the victims' rights, recognizing the need for reparation for the victims, and establishes a, a, a transitional justice uh, scheme that, that uh, allows the, the uh, those that have committed uh, uh. crimes to confess their crimes to uh, participate in the reparation of, of of the victims, and therefore I think that this is not only a a big step in uh, leading to the disarmament of the FARC, but also to uh, advancing Colombian democracy. So I'm looking at pictures of the signing of this agreement. There's a lot of theater going on there, Mario. How does that theater translate into what people in Colombia actually want? How does that deal reflect the feeling on the ground? I think it's, it, uh, and I agree with D Daniel Garcia Peña that it's a, it's a, it's a great accord in, 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 in stopping the fighting between the FARC rebels and the Colombian government. And I think that's an essential component, uh, an essential part of it. It's historic, and, and a lot of people are celebrating it. Um, and, but, but I think we have to be realistic about the long trajectory of violence, political violence, uh, intolerance, uh, political intolerance in, in Colombia uh, that, that puts a lot of people uh, you know, at, at, with at dis-ease right now because of what 
they expect to happen subsequent to the signing and uh, eventual implementation of the accord. I think there's a there's a lot of op there's some opposition as we we've heard and you pointed out in the beginning to the accord from the right, but there's also concerns about what it means for 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 representatives of the social movements of the indigenous movement, the Afro-Colombian movement, the peasantry, which although the accord recognizes the root causes of the of the conflict we know that there's a long history of resistance to ceding anything to the poorest sectors, the most marginalized sectors in Colombian society. So, so we must remain vigilant as to where we go from here as the guns between the FARC and government slowly begin to silence. It's interesting that you said it does address the root causes of the problem and the conflict. There's someone who would agree with you. This is Catalina. She sent us a video comment. I'm going to play this and then direct it to you, Federico. Have a listen. I'm voting yes because this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. This armed conflict has caused hundreds of thousands of deaths and, of course, a lot of pain to Colombian people. I am convinced that once this conflict is over, we will have a much stronger democracy. I have read the agreement, and I believe that, although it's not perfect, it's the best deal we can reach because it addresses the root causes of the conflict, includes reparation to the victims, a transitional justice system, and reverses some of the damages associated with the war on drugs. So not perfect, but the very best deal that we could reach as Colombians. Do you agree with that, Federico? Well, first of all, thank you for having me. Thank you for this opportunity to communicate some of our ideas. I don't believe it's the best agreement that the government could have reached. There are a lot of flaws in the agreement. There are flaws in the transitional justice system, there are flaws in the political participation that has been offered to FARC, where they will not have to go to, through a democratic process, but they will have 10 direct seats in Congress without ever going through a democ democratic process. This, of course, sends a very bad message to other armed groups, such as the ELN or the criminal bands, which still operate in Colombia. A very important point that I want to stress out is that violence in Colombia is not only offered and made by the FARC. There are different armed illegal actors, such as the ELN, the criminal bands. So when peace is offered and the peace agreement is, 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 is sold as the best one possible and the, and the, and the best altern alternative for peace, I believe that's not correctly true. Uh, there are more political actors that are in the, in, the, in, the, in the armed process and that will still keep operating. Besides, uh, I, I saw Catalina was mentioning the... Uh, uh, the drug part. Colombia has improved, has has been improving during the years in the drug um, uh, 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 fighting. Nonetheless, during the last two years, there has been a 42 percent increase over the drug uh, crops in Colombia. What does, does what does this mean? It means that there, we are producing more drugs, which are strengthening military and economically the the cartels, the FARC, the the ELN, and other armed actors. When we have strong armed actors, we have a uh, real threat. Frederica, take, Fre take, take a pause for a moment because you're bringing up a lot of points and, and this is a very long agreement. It's a, a hard one to work our way through. But Adam, I, I know you wanted to actually jump in. Go ahead. Well, well sure. I mean, I, I think my position on this is after Plan Columbia began in 2000, there was a 12 year military offensive carried out that reduced the FARC's strength by about two thirds. Um, but they still have at least 6,000 people in arms. Um, it then took four years to negotiate what they got, an accord that actually the FARC probably gives up a lot more than the government, but that still allows what they're calling restriction of liberty without actual prison for mm -hmm. the human rights violators. We that? don't know what that means. What does that mean? Huge question. It's going to be defined. Restricted of, say, say that phrase again. Restri effective restriction of liberty is a phrase that, that is used in the accord, and, um, and that's for people who have committed crimes against humanity or war crimes. What does it mean? It's not going to be a prison with striped pajamas and bars on the windows. It is going to be determined really, well, first by Colombia's Congress, which has to pass a law to decide what this is going to be, then reviewed by their Supreme or their Constitutional Court. And then the International Criminal Court is going to have a say on that. And then finally, in the special tribunal they set up, the judge, him or herself, is going to probably determine what exactly, how to austere the conditions decided. will be. Exactly. Okay. It's been wow. kicked down the road. So if you call this impunity, that's an early judgment. We don't know that yet. Mm.
And yet people online are, some are calling it impunity. But well, then huge. there's this perspective. This is Heather Mario. She says Uribe, the former president, oversaw record human rights violations and people fleeing as refugees. And so she wants that to be remembered as well, meaning that there were two sides to this conflict and then both should be held accountable if people are calling for accountability for FARC members. They should also be count calling for accountability for uh, former government uh, leaders. What do you make of that argument? That's absolutely true. I mean, I think that's it's got to be understood in a historical context. The, the the right in Colombia has never ceded anything without a very powerful backlash against any progressive sectors in Colombia, whether they're armed or, or, or unarmed. Uh, when we talk about opening up seats for the for the FARC, yeah, we can have problems with that and look at that as okay, well maybe that's maybe opening up too much space. But on the other hand, you have to say, well, what happened in previous? Uh, uh, um, Moments in history when the when 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 the political left tried to create a, a, a legitimate political uh, movement within the structures of pol uh, Colombian democracy, there was a violent backlash. No, absolutely no. no. There, there is the, a left party the, in Colombia. I think it's very important that the those who are watching TV uh, right now know that Colombia have left there, there was there wasn't there wasn't a, a massacre. Of there wasn't a massacre yeah, of 3,500 members of the Patriotic there Union in the 1980s up until the 90s. They were mixing, if you look at the history of it, you know politics. that. They were using no. all forms of politics. So, Paloma they and Mario, let's just, take, and let's just take turns so you don't talk over each other. So, Mario, go, go ahead. I, I was just going to say that, the, I mean, the, there's, there's, the, the FARC in 1984 were, was a different group than they were that, than they are now and that they've been the last 15, 20 years, right? There's a lot of uh, people who've documented how, as a result of what happened, specifically subsequent to a failed peace uh, deal and peace negotiations that were going on in the 1980s, right. that they f they found no other option. And, and I'm not condoning it. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Right, so, 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 so Mario, just leave that there because I know Paloma wants to come right back at you. Paloma, go ahead. Yeah, I think it's very important for you to know that Colombia has had a lot of uh, leftist parties. They, we have it right now. The, the thing was that quite mixed it, politics with arms. So I, I'm not saying it was good, but there was a massacre because they were also killing people. So I think it's very different to say that. And also I want to point out that Colombia is a democracy and they, they, they just pointed the guns against us, the democracy, our president, all of the Colombian people, because they feel they couldn't do it in the politics so they can use arms to do it. And they have been using narco-trafficking and illegal mining and kidnapping as a way of having a lot of money to do it. Okay. And you, you may know that FARC do, does not represent a significant part of Colombia. Well, just to contextualize, yeah, the FARC during a failed peace process in the 1980s started a political party that they thought would be their entry into civilian political life. And yes, about 3,500 of their members were killed. Today, You've had leftist parties elect mayor of Bogota. Um, they've been, um, uh, they, they've had several seats in Congress and have mostly survived doing that. There is a left that's viable in Colombia. I would note the difference still is that that is an urban left. Almost all of those candidates and successful candidates have been from large cities. Um, very little in the countryside or the small cities where it remains very hard to have a, a left uh, movement. Um, the hope is that this accord will change that by creating space for that, for the FARC, but also for others. You know, and, and when talking I, when, uh, when talking I, about creating space, uh, uh, I'll, I'll bring you in here. Uh, when talking about creating space, there is the concern among some people, and Mario, you mentioned this earlier, about seats being made available, a quota system of sorts, uh, for former FARC rebels. This is Luis, he writes in, suddenly Timoshenko, who, the leader of FARC, and heads of FARC are potentially politicians for governors, Congress, and the presidency. Uh, so. Federico, I'll give that to you. What do you make of these seats being made available? Well, I think it's a step back in democracy when criminals against humanity that have committed the worst crimes, such as child recruitment, uh, land mining, um, civil, uh, attacks over the civilian population, can suddenly be elected to public office. In our laws in Colombia, just for you and the audience to know, if someone gets uh, a, a, a condemned a, a, a judicially, they would never can be elected for political seats. Nonetheless, there is a, an exception made to the FARC. It sends a terrible message for society, a message of injustice, a message of 
uh, that they're giving an award to FARC for, for having done what they did over the 50 years of violence. Uh, my greatest worry is that over the years, different groups, armed groups, illegal groups, would ask for the same conditions such as the FARC. This way, we are not building a peace process, but what we're doing is encouraging violence and we're giving a terrible message to other armed actors where we're saying that if you, if you uh, fight the state with all your military might, you might get as well, get elected and get uh, political benefits such as the FARC can get. Uh, Frederico, let me just bring in Daniel here. Daniel, I mean, you've been involved in negotiations for, for a long, long, long time. What do you make of these kind of criticisms and concerns? How do you respond to them? Because you like this still. Yes. First of all, let's remember that uh, Adam was, talk was mentioning that in the 80s, the FARC created a political movement called the Union Patriotica that in free elections, free and open elections, elected nine senators excuse me, nine uh, uh, members of the House of Representatives and five senators. Uh, and that party was uh, eliminated, physically exterminated through the use of violence. So the five senators and the five uh, members of the House that they are now being granted are even less than what they had de democratically achieved in the 1980s and were uh, uh, taken away through violence. And this is not the first time in Colombian history that we have made agreements of this sort in the, uh, uh, to end the, the violence between liberals and conservatives in 1957-58. Um, there was an agreement by which half of the Congress would go to the conservative party, although by any means they did not represent half of the, of the electorate. So um, the, 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 there's a tradition in, in Colombian history that when we reach agreements, the, the pr precisely the idea is to give voice, political voice, uh, to, the, to those parties. And if you look at our Congress, the five senators and the five members of the, of the Congress, we're talking about a small percentage. There's 100 senators altogether, 163 members of the House. So we're not talking about handing the country over to the guerrillas. We're simply opening up during a specific period of eight years for them to be able to have these seats. But then after that, it will be, be uh, 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 the elections that decide uh, how many representatives they will have. And Daniel, I hear you there. I also see Federico uh, shaking his head no, but I want to bring in another concern from our community. This is Alejandro, who says, I will vote no because FARC is the biggest drug cartel the world has ever seen, and they haven't stopped doing it. So what assurances are being made or are put forward in this deal, uh, Mario, to ensure that uh, cocaine trafficking is one of the things that stops? Well, that's a major issue, obviously, and it's the, that vacuum, it's not only the FARC. I mean, we're talking about a multi-billion dollar industry that has a considerable a, a variety of, of sources uh, in terms of who's benefiting from that. To, to refer to the, Columbia, to the FARC rebels as the largest car cartel in the world uh, is probably not necessarily accurate, considering the role that uh, the Bakrim and the many other organizations, the former AUC, the paramilitary groups that were dismantled uh, through another peace process that had very similar uh, concerns about human rights and impunity that were being leveled from the from, from uh, you know within politi uh, 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 Colombian political circles, uh, th those groups in many ways are still operating uh, and still benefiting from the drug trade, and so to just simply refer to the FARC as the number one you know biggest largest drug cartel in, in the world uh, is over simplifying the situation. There is no question about it, and I would love to hear Danielle's perspective on that in terms of. Uh, that major issue, that vacuum is going to be filled, and it and it, it, it may be remnants of far combatants who don't see an option. See, right Mario, as, as you're speaking, Adam is like, I, I, I need to, <laughs> I need to interject. Adam, go ahead. Well, well, two things. I mean, yes, the FARC raised money from narco trafficking, mm. um, mostly upstream in the coca fields. Um, probably the actual transshipment, where the big money is, is in charge of other, is is, is run by other groups. Um, but they, uh, you know, as of this week. Uh, if FARC members are still involved in narco-trafficking, they don't get any, anything else. They are become criminals. Um, they become criminals who have to be hunted down and arrested, um, and they, there's no amnesty for that or anything else. One thing we have to find out about the FARC's past narco-trafficking, it's not all automatically forgiven. Um, if it's determined that some of it went for personal gain, they've got, you know, Rolexes and swimming pools and villas somewhere, um, then they will actually go to regular jail for that as a narco-trafficking offense. If they can, if they have to, and the burden of proof is on them, if they can prove that it all went into guns and paying for their troops and everything like that, the only then can it be amnestied. See, Daniel, 
We only have five minutes left in this part of the conversation. I'm going to ask you to be very direct if I share this with you. This is from SNJ, and SNJ tweets at AJ Stream. It is impressive that the Colombian people will have the final say in this peace process. Um, as we look ahead to the referendum and then beyond, there were some practicalities about how you make this deal a reality. What do you think will be the biggest challenge? If the people of Colombia vote yes, what will be the biggest challenge? Well, I think that the biggest challenge is the uh, implementation in the territories where the FARC uh, operated for many years. Uh, you know, just now I heard, uh, I think it was Paloma say that Colombia is a full-fledged democracy. Well, the fact is that we are um, a, a very limited democracy that is now trying with this agreement to, to fill areas where the state has never had, had a presence. So uh, I think the biggest challenge is to, in the, those areas where historically there has been an, uh, an absence of the state, where the FARC have, 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 have had their presence, for us to build roads, to build schools, to build uh, uh, courtrooms. Um, and and that, that is, is, is a great responsibility, not only of the Colombian state, but of, of Colombian society. Uh, I think that the, uh, Mario uh, talked a, a few minutes ago about the history of intolerance. Uh, you know that in Colombia, uh, unfortunately, for many years, for decades, uh, it has been the use of violence that uh, has replaced uh, the electoral system. And, uh, and the reason we're in this conflict to begin with is because uh, 70 years ago, a major popular movement that was about to reach uh, the, the, uh, uh, the power through elections was, uh, was eliminated. Uh, and, and the FARC uh, uh, was born of, 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 of this resistance movement um, of, of the peasants. So we have a huge challenge as, 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 as a country, uh, as a society, to accept that we can have differences, that we can uh, debate our differences. So, so Daniel, people, so, people, some people online, let me qualify, say that that's a challenge that still really needs a lot of uh, attention to make sure that we can go in that direction. Uh, there's a video comment we got from Charlie. Now, you mentioned earlier ab about violence and the use of it as a tool. Here's Charlie's concern. From my experience talking to people, there's a lot of trepidation, there's a lot of caution around what comes next. Um, people talk of the conflicto del post-conflicto, the conflict of the post-conflict. Um, even the day after the ceasefire came into effect, three uh, campesino leaders were murdered in Cauca. So it's clear that paramilitaries are still there. A lot of the social problems that underlie the conflict are still there. Um, so really, the interesting part is what comes next. So Paloma, what comes next in your mind? If, if, the, if Colombians vote yes, what I feel is going to there is going to be a lot of more violence because there will begin a war to get the business of. Uh, cocaine trafficking and illegal mining, which is the motor or every violence in Colombia. FARC wasn't a hazard for Colombia until they owned the illegal crops and they were dealing with this cocaine all over the, the world. So what is going to happen is, the real question is, what is going to happen with all the, all the illegal groups, which are taking this message as a sign that they can do whatever they want, be very violent, and at the end, the government will also have to negotiate with them in terms of no pain jail and giving them a political space. Adam. I mean, this is the, the right thing to be looking at uh, in the post-conflict. Colombia has about 1,100 counties, municipalities, most of them very sparsely populated. Some of the least sparsely populated are FARC dominated until now. Um, and there are places along the coasts and along the borders where a lot of drugs move, and there's a lot of money to be made. There's a lot of illegal mining, a lot of money to be made. Who's going to replace the FARC in those areas? Um, who's going to fill that vacuum? Probably regional groups, um, no local narco traffickers, former FARC, and they will fight each other very violently. Malika, where do you want to leave us before we head to the post show? So this is Heather with her prescription for what should come next. She says truth commission and prosecuting human rights crimes on all sides will be an important part of peace, reconciliation and transitional justice. Thank you to all of our guests for being part of this conversation. We are not letting you go quite yet, guests. We're taking you online to streamout.aljazeera.com and that will be where our post show continues. Thanks everybody for being part of this program. Hopefully see you soon. Take care.
Hello everybody, welcome to the post show. We're carrying on our conversation about the deal between the FARC and the government of Colombia. Have a look here on my laptop, uh, Reuters headline, rebels could become guides, cheesemakers in post-war Colombia. Do you ever think, Mario, in your wildest dreams, you would ever see a headline like that? Is that even, is that possible? It's possible, but I want to go back to something that Charlie was pointing out, the caller or viewer before, who yeah. said that uh, already three in Cauca were killed, three social movement activists were killed. Actually, there was a report in Semana earlier last week that pointed out that since the accord was announced about a month ago, um, 20, up to 20 people, uh, social movement organizers, uh, local regional people that in, in the countryside have been assassinated. So the, so the backlash has already begun in many ways, people who are not content with the, with the peace accords as they stand. And so that's, that's something to be concerned about because these are not. These are people who have always been targeted no, I think by the. Should, no, let me just finish. Let me just finish the point. Look, I, child, let me just finish. Let me just finish the point. But I don't kill people. No, no, no. But I'm not saying. I'm not talking about you. But I'm talking about there's a long trajectory, a long history of 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 violent backlash against social movement activists who are. Uh, pigeonholed and described as terrorists, as supporters of the guerrillas. You know, journalists have been attacked, trade unionists have been attacked, uh, church workers have been attacked. Was There's a long history of that. Boss, who was a, who was a former minister and what now there was he's a journalist. So, so, and so the violence. So the violence is the only so people that's, responsible that's for political well, violence in the country are the FARC. If you if you're willing to accept that, you're sticking your head in the sand. Unfortunately, you're not looking at the reality. And the point I'm trying to make is that there's a lot of concern. For people who are su still supportive of the silencing of the weapons, of the clo of, of uh, ending this war between the FARC and the go and the government, uh, that are still concerned that their that peace is not going to come to their territories, precisely because of the intransigence of a lot of different armed actors in the countryside, and also the inability in the past for the government, many governments, from the liberals to the conservatives to any everybody in between, who have not satisfied or fulfilled the accords that they had agreed with specific sectors of the of the community, the social movements, the indigenous movements. How many accords have been broken and or at least not fulfilled uh, uh, for, to, to the communities that have been mobilizing in the, in the countryside? Guess, um, so that's the thing that Mario, we have to be. Paloma, Daniel. Uh, Federico, Adam, I'm really curious. I didn't ask you in, the, in this in the main show because it's total punditry. But this is the post show and we're online, which is the home of punditry. I am just curious, and I, and I want you to do it in, in a very brief way. What do you think the outcome of the referendum might be? What is your gut or what is your experience? What are your sources telling you? Let's start with Adam and I'm going to ask everybody, but very briefly. My gut is um, it will win, but it will not um, get more than 60%. Federico. My only guess is that the, in the independent of the result, the country will still be divided and polarization will continue. Daniel, the outcome of the I referendum. Think the yes, will will double the no. It will be two to one uh -huh. in favor of yes. Paloma. The government is using a lot of a lot of money. They're using in a lot of propaganda. We don't. We are a small party. We don't have anything. So probably they're going to win. But uh, what you can feel in Colombia. If you saw uh, Cartagena's uh, peace, it was only the peace with the president. Nobody in the streets were celebrating. Everybody was really sad about this agreement. Mario. That's not I true. I was in Cartagena. That was absolutely not true, Paloma. Uh, I'm sorry. I, was there. I, think was, I, I saw the joy throughout the country. And I woke the a lot. There's a lot of people. I can just tell you right now, Paloma. I, and, uh, you're, 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 you're just looking at, at things from your very uh, uh, small uh circle of friends but there's a the, if you go to the regions where people have suffered the war the people have, have had to uh, live the war people are, are very I'm happy right now in Solima, and people, only going those of us that are in the cities can even think of voting no because we have not been touched by the war the way that they have this is what happens when I try to do punditry. Okay, <laughs> Mario, just, Mario, the referendum, yeah, the add, outcome of the referendum well, will be, well, there is a yes or no answer to yeah, this but, question. But want, because we yes, are it, out of time. Mario, give us your thought before you leave. I know there's more to well, be said. I, and I, I don't want, want to squeeze something. you into the last 30 seconds. Pa, 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 because pa, just addressing what both Daniel and pa, Paloma were saying, I was in northern Cauca for about a week and a half in July into August. August, and I was talking to people who were actually victimized, who, who described themselves as having lost family members because of the violence and, and directly because of the FARC. Mm. And they're voting for the, the referendum. They're voting in favor of the peace agreement 
because they the live through this violence every day and they're tired of it. That are victims also voting yes. no. yeah. We yeah. we pick up the conversation where we started it, which is how happy are people with this deal? You gave us a really good sense and different perspectives. Thank you. Thank you very yes, much for that. We, we can't put a period at the end of this conversation, but I'm going to have to. But before I do that... Thank you so much. I his, appreciate it. We, you're very welcome. Yeah. Malika. The last word I will give to Laura, uh, who's a little bit optimistic. Here's what she had to say. Colombia has never been this close to putting it to this long, complicated war of 52 years. Um, so these agreements are seen by the whole region uh, with tremendous amount of hope. And this comes with the extremely difficult process of healing, of forgiving and reconciliation. Uh, all of this in the effort of making a, a more inclusive, more equal Colombia. Thanks everybody for being part of this discussion. To be continued, I'm sure. Take care.